Hello everyone, I am Ardhendu De. You are watching Eddie's English Literature. Herein I am going to carry out a detailed analysis of Francis Bacon's essays. Bacon is the pragmatic essayist and most suitable Renaissance man. What we will find here in Bacon's of the Renaissance spirit and an opportunism and as pragmatism as a utilitarian philosopher. But before we begin, take Bacon's words seriously in your, in your studies, but take it a rest while leading your life. It is because life is not 2 plus 2 equal to 4. It is sometimes 4, sometimes not the 4, sometimes beyond 4. Francis Bacon, 1561 to 1626. The man is the product of Renaissance. Man's glory, generous, attains his opportunities of mind and body, his eyes rolling across the subtle and magnificence of the world, his joy, his hearing, his discovering, his learning, his owing, getting all this as it exists in, in Bacon's mind is the very essence. Councils, civil and moral as the title goes. It exhibits a practical value in life. The other book that I must note here is the advancement of learning. It is significant because uh, it introduces the empirical method which has since become the foundation of the science. Bacon uh, in that book argues that the only knowledge of authority is the knowledge that's gathered from objective observation. Note this word, objective observation. So what we see is to be judged and out of that judgment, conclusion should be made. That objective observation is the key foundation of his essays too. Bacon's essays are counsels and are designed for the practical benefits of man, not for his emotional or imaginative development. That's why I cautioned in the introduction part that you should not judge entirely your life by Bacon's words. The utilitarian attitude is most evident in his essays. The revival of learning, the study of humanism, the reformist zeal, the note of nationalism, the pursuit of discovery, spread of printing, this multifarious influence of the Renaissance time has its impact on literature. Imagination is replaced by realism, fiction and falsity give away to fact and truth. Exaggeration is no longer indulged in. Artificiality is substituted by naturalism. Reason prevails over crudity and blind faith. Search for truth or scientific inquiry is the dominant feature of that time. And Bacon with the spirit of Renaissance has also started for scientific investigations of our morals, of our ethics. Fanaticism stops in the hand of liberty. In short, literature of that Renaissance time begins to convey facts. These new tendencies are evident in every poet, in every prose writer of merit in the Elizabethan period. And Bacon is no exception in this regard. In fact, Bacon bore the torch in front of these Elizabethan people. Bacon is the master of utilitarian principles. The intellect of Bacon was one of the most powerful and searching, searching ever possessed by man and his developments of the inductive philosophy revolutionized the future thought of the human race. So here the words of John Cousin is so vivid and analytical of understanding Bacon that he 
produced a great kind of literature with the principles of utilitarian or pragmatic sort. Bacon's essays are the art of success among men. He comes out as a moralist, the statesman and the man of the world. And his essays are the treasure of wisdom arising from the universal insights into the affairs of the world. There is a blend of deep wisdom and practical straightness with satire, meditative dialogues, eloquence are there, meditative eloquence. Bacon expresses his views in the form of antithesis. It is the outcome of his mental habit fashioned by his practice in the courts. His essays remain force compendium of practical philosophy. There is found wit, keen observation, braver or clever mundane judgments. So Bacon is like that of a treatise. Bacon is like that of a philosophical epitome. Bacon is like that of anthropology. Even a cursory glance at the essays will bear the truth about Bacon. His 59 odd essays covering varied range of topics exhibit his in-depth knowledge, ideas and perception on variegated aspects of human life. In fact, Bacon was a versatile man of genius, a philosopher, scientist, literary scholar, statesman, lawyer and above all a practical man of this world. His essays convey profound and condensed thought in a style that is at once clear and rich and bear his worthy identity, the man of Renissa. Bacon's essays can be grouped in three categories, essays in relation to the world and society, essays in relation to individualism and essays in relation to his makers, that is God or nature. The first group that evaluates the relationship of mankind to the physical world and their mutual relations include of sedition, of troubles, of great places, of discourse, of judicature, of suitors. The second group describing man in his intellectual and moral relations with others covers issues like of parents and children, of marriage, of envy, of love, of travel, of friendship, of health, of custom and education, of followers and friends, of studies, of ceremonies and respects, of honor and reputation, of fame, so many of these kinds. Man's relationship with his makers and the unseen world is primary focus in the third group that includes essays like of death, of unity in religion, of goodness, of goodness of nature, of atheism, of superstition, of wisdom for a man's self, of nature in man etc. But grouping is more pedantic while each of the essays of Bacon marks interrelated studies and views. Now out of all these essays I will drag you into of studies and of discourse and I will recognize you to this particular essays and invite you to read it. Because uh, Bacon's famous these two essays of studies and of discourse is so attractive in its epitome of wisdom. Bacon is a, in fact a champion of learning. In of studies Bacon means not mere act of studying but the result that follow systematic and long practiced habits of study. That is uh, it also includes the part of education and culture. Bacon points out the utility and method of study uh, and 
enumerates the practical benefits to be derived from the study of different subjects. With an astonishing freshness of illustration, Bacon points out the key use of studies in his essay of studies. He says, uh, delight in privacy, ornament in society, and ability in practical business. Bacon puts awesomes on disadvantages of studies. Spending too much time in them, says Bacon, is sloth, whereas the superfluous display of learning is affectations. Being too much guided by them and thus separating studies from practical use is the humor of a scholar. Bacon the guide here provides certain rules for study. Firstly, books are to be weighed and considered. Again, books are to be read according to its importance. In parts without much care, wholly with careful attention and through summaries separated or rather uh, prepared by uh, their deputies. Bacon includes reading, conference and writing in his studies to acquire knowledge, to gain wit and readiness, to learn exactness and accuracy. Uh, Bacon values different modes of studies according to make wise use of them. He prefers history to foster wisdom, poetry to foster wit, mathematics to foster subtlety, and natural philosophy to foster depth, and moral philosophy to foster gravity, weight, and uh, logic and rhetoric to foster the capacity of debate and uh, argument. So, his pragmatic attitude is also evident in his final observation that specific studies should be pursued in order to cure specific inefficiencies of mind, just as medicines are taken to cure certain diseases of the body. So, this whole essay of, of studies is so much interesting a study and if you go through this essay, you will just be um, dragged into Bacon's aphorism, Bacon's conscriptic brevity, Bacon's um, lucid and pragmatic wordstock and you will be bowled by the very bowling of Bacon's pragmatic spin. But uh, you should also be cautious of your understanding the Bacon and Bacon's time that without emotional, without the being emotional, you cannot have a totality of your studies. Others essay of discourse prioritizes a practical Baconian guide to fluent, flowing, graceful, effective communication, which would definitely enrich the course of living. Bacon prescribes certain guidelines to improve oratory, to be utilized in the practical course of life. He denounces the kind of superfluous, sway and jaded argument and welcomes thoughtful, fact-oriented, earnest, witty, added with humorous touch in our discourse. Bacon finds conversation an occasion where none is severely hurt, rather it should be amusing and a portrayal of the persona of the speaker. According to Bacon, running a conversation is like riding a horse, which needs both the speed and control. Like a utilitarian guide, Bacon advises to speak seldom carrying value and weight in them. Further, one notable thing is there um, that Bacon adds here uh, that the speaker should yield virtue in them and a person's satirical in vain should avail himself of other sweet. He again uh, the traces of proportionate use of circumstances and matters so that the oration never comes out of proportion or uh, it should not be blunt or wearisome. So both these two essays for example that I have mentioned of studies and of discourse is very uh, pragmatic advices and these advices are so interesting and so appealing that you will be um, very much attracted by the logic that uh, Bacon uh, argumentatively put forward here. And you will also understand how much a pragmatic guide he is in his essays.
Now another portion that I should not miss the bacon skin interest on charge uh, that is uh, that is religion morality and kind of uh, kind of religious teaching is there and uh, the essays like of truth of superstitions of atheism of unity of religion of godness of goodness of innovation these are partly religious or rather Baconian explanation of religion is there his deep and earnest interest in ecclesiastical matters moral ethical values are evident in these pieces for example uh, in the unity of religion uh, he strikes a point of view which is still relevant in our days of religious fanaticism commenting on the religious tolerance and humanism Bacon says religion being the chief band of human society is a happy thing when itself is well contained within the true band of unity so uh, uh, when the time is so hostile Baconian this pragmatic advice is a harbinger of peace Bacon's politics and statements is quite vivid in some of his essays that need some mention here of great place of nobility of sedition of troubles of the true greatness of kingdoms and estates these intriguing these uh, tricks cunning internal politics in favor or uh, the, the 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 ins and outs of goodly life are also uh, gone through this uh, scrutinized essays uh, his acute observation on related to judiciary system uh, corruption rampant among clerks and clients of lawyers are arguably stated a few of the essays sometimes uh, so stunning to watch that Bacon the pragmatic man Bacon the so utilitarian philosopher is thinking about family matters in of domestic relations of revenge of parents and children of marriage and single life of envy of love of friendship and these are like that of a consummate mastery of Baconian view of family Bacon describes wife and children as hostess to fortune impediments to great enterprises either of virtue or mischief he does not appreciate marriage and ignores the bliss of emotional unity. He says, unmarried men are best friends, best masters, best servants, but not always best subjects. For they are like to run away and almost all fugitives are of that condition so entire world the elizabethan world man and life matters manners anthropology whole of the anthro european heaviness of renaissance is that of in bacon's mind of bacon as renaissance scholar and philosopher we can only say that he is one of the founders of modern systematic as well as didactic thought studies encourage rationality and sound discourse assimilates culture as well as political base naturally his essays primarily serve a utilitarian purpose they become the treasure of wisdom arising from the universal insights into the affairs of the world so bacon's view bacon's world bacon's pragmatic view bacon's pragmatic world and his observation is a vivid study for us to understand the man and manners of Elizabethan times as well as when we are in our student life when we are studying when we need some management of our thought our, our emotions when we are so much guided by emotions and the philosophy of broadband life is nothing so restricted then and the kind of Baconian view 
will make us a fair judge in judging few of the methods of our life. But I once again say that Baconian view or pragmatic ideological view is not to be judged totally by anybody because one cannot lead one's life such mathematically correct or such utilitarian way of leading a life because life is beyond logic there are something that can be explained through in our emotional world so when we are studying literature the emotion the the patience always come handy in some judging in some aspects in some affairs of our life so so baconian view is sometimes a leading way to our life but sometimes it can be a way of hindrance in our way of emotional judgment of something so like share comment and obviously make some comments on your baconian observations of pragmatism like share comment and obviously subscribe to my channel bye bye